persuading holdouts to get shots. That's the byline for many papers, if they run the AP, about the new OSHA vaccine mandate upon 100 employee firms or larger. Persuasion is not done by force. Compliance might be. Reason is what gets you persuasiveness, but there is no reason behind these mandates. It is only for an increase even more in the power of those in authority. I'll tell you what it might persuade people to do, to buy guns, because it may come down to this. If you are forcing people to give up their livelihood, if you're forcing business owners, because that Y100, it's probably gonna drop down to 10 a few months later. You force them to give up their cherished dreams of what they've built. They ain't gonna do it so easily. By the way, why are we at a 100 person threshold? Does a virus actually know it's attacking somebody who works in a 103 person firm versus a 50 person firm? No, they're using the 100 because they can. And that's the common thread of all these mandates from governors to federal administrators for the last 20 months. The vaccine at 100 people is an impediment, no different if it's an impediment at all, to firms with 10 people. The virus, if it really is that harmful, that fast, is harmful to the one-third of American workers who work in medium and small size firms. So why do they go after the larger firms? It's because they'll comply. Think about who owns large firms. Well, the very largest firms, the big corporations, are owned by stockholders. So CEOs are actually just managers. They are not owners. They don't have a full ownership stake. And thus, they can more easily say, sure, we'll go along because to go against, we, we it's, it's too much of a loser for us. Okay, sure, we've got lots of employees. No one of them is essential. If a few of them leave, we can replace them. Other owners, maybe the 100 to 250 size. Okay, they're often solo entrepreneurs with a good number of people and already a well, a high standard of living for the owners. So when you're that successful already, maybe you don't rock the boat. You try this on an eight, 10, 20 person firm, something that a woman has built up her last two decades to, to make into a profitable business, she ain't going along, okay? You are taking away some of their truly valuable employees who don't wanna go along and maybe shutting down her business in the process. And for what? Because a vaccine that doesn't completely work we're supposed to put everybody getting vaccines that don't completely work to protect people from the vaccines that don't completely work. It's perverse. By the way, whatever happened to HIPAA, okay? The health protection of, in, of patients' records, okay? Gobs of paperwork, gobs of compliance for the last almost 20 years since HIPAA was pushed on us. It's out the window now when your basic health information now must be known by the government. Persuading is now my job. And I hope I can persuade you to hold out till we get these authoritarian bastards out of power. Every under 70 adult risks of dying for COVID is less than from driving for the next couple years in a car. A child's risk of dying from COVID is far less than dying for travel in a car. But we're not eliminating travel in a car, are we? There are some risks to all aspects of life. The authoritarians in power, they recognize it. They do. They're not dumb. They want more power. So, to elevate fears, that's effective for the authoritarians to make the penalty for not complying 
something really harsh? That's what authoritarians do. It is un-American. They leave you with less. They leave you with less independence. They leave you with less freedom. And they leave you with less control over your lives. The authoritarians better be prepared to face guns against them. Because that's what they're engendering with this January 4th mandate. I'm Mark Stewart.